फाइव क्वेश्चन नाउ फ्रॉम कॉर्पोरेट इश्यूअर्स वॉट शुड बी द आंसर फॉर द फर्स्ट वन सी company that produces goods to be marketed by other firms is best described as having a contract manufacturing business model okay which example no yeah i'd give an example of my dad shirt manufacturing but not under his own brand name for other brands so my dad will manufacture the shirts and it will he will stick the tag of other brands so my dad is called a contract manufacturer okay fine value added reseller what is value added reseller let me give you an example gada electronics okay they sell tv fridges and all but under someone matlab whatever products they get from the company those products panasonic lg and all value added reseller simply means of course jti will buy the products and sell it at a margin of course now jti just won't sell the products he will provide installation services for ac for example he will provide installation services he will also provide after sales service he will also provide maintenance services three uh, three maintenances you get free and all for acs some shops provide so that is the concept of value added reseller he is not only selling the ac but is giving extra services also pertaining to the ac understood the concept of value added reseller fine licensing arrangement that we had discussed when we were discussing franchising versus licensing okay friend where will greater control be exerted in franchising or licensing franchising franchisor will exert greater control over the franchisee but that may not necessarily be the case with licensing okay fine licensing is what say for example i am a pharma company i am a pharma company i developed the formula and i have sold the formula i have sold the formula outright and i give it to someone that for example manish i have sold the formula to you now you can manufacture the drugs and sell it under your brand name and you give me royalty for whatever you sell it in contract manufacturing there will be no concept of royalty and all that okay fine did you understand this now i give you the freedom the way you want to manufacture i have given you the formula now it's up to you how you want to manufacture it like that had i been a franchisor i would have told her okay you manufacture in this way you you do this you do that i would have exerted greater control understood this fine second what should be the answer business model of a knowledge aggregation company that allows its users to contribute directly to online content is best referred to as platform business model marketplace business model crowdsourcing business model crowdsourcing business model wikipedia is an example of crowdsourcing you can contribute your articles to wikipedia and wikipedia won't pay you anything if there are any mistakes in your article other users would correct it for which they also won't be paid so how does wikipedia function then on donations grants and all that stuff that is the true meaning of a crowdsourcing business model in our lectures we had taken the example of media map if you remember if you are a good writer you can contribute your articles on the media map and media map will pay you for that but for media map to pay you it itself has to generate revenue right so media map will sell subscription services and all that stuff so it is partially crowdsourcing but partially like a traditional subscription based business model also crowdsourcing is when users contribute to the content youtube again partially traditional business model and partially crowdsourcing who is providing the content has youtube hi hired employees to create content no it is users anyone can create content and contribute that is typical case of crowdsourcing but then youtube pays the content creators 
now from where is youtube paying it advertising fees and all which youtube gets out of that so it is traditional business model plus partly crowdsourcing and in traditional can i say hidden revenue because youtube is free for you to use understood the concepts so option c marketplace business model what was the example of marketplace business model amazon it is simply helping buyers and sellers to connect is it selling anything under its own brand name no we had distinguished this with aggregator business aggregator business we had taken example of uber is uber selling under its own brand name yes but actual services are provided by the cab drivers but branding and all is done by uber like that and standardized services see uber will have some norms that cab drivers have to behave in a particular manner there will be certain norms on pricing and all that whereas in case of amazon will amazon tell the sellers that you charge this particular price and this that particular price no there won't be any such standardization which is what distinguishes the aggregators and uh, marketplace business models understood this fine and platform business platform business are those businesses which are traditionally based on network effects i had explained what are network effects one sided network effect two sided network effects we had taken the example of sky scanner two sided network effect more the number of airplanes that are listed you as users get more choices and if more users are using that app so similarly airlines also would benefit because they have a wider audience that is a two sided network effect zomato also was an example of what two sided network effect more the number of restaurants listed on zomato more the benefit for users and more the users similarly restaurants also would enjoy because wider customer base so that is two sided network effect and these are what our platform businesses zomato sky scanner and all that uber an academy etc fine okay clear what should be the answer in flexibility option we had two price setting and production flexibility this reacts to poor financial result from the project by abandoning it i had told you if you want to cut your losses which option is beneficial abandonment option but that option is nowhere given so by elimination method you can select sizing option and to tell you that under sizing option are abandonment and expansion options abandonment gives you the right the option to close it to cut your losses and expansion option gives you the option to expand your project if you are seeing good profits so abandonment is not straight away mentioned but you have to understand within sizing there are two abandonment and expansion which help you to increase or decrease the size of the project i hope you understood timing is an option in itself different option and so is flexibility clear there was one more if you remember apart from all these which we discussed fundamental okay fourth question when choosing between two mutually exclusive projects an analyst should what or mutually exclusive projects choosing one project if you choose project a you cannot choose project b if you choose project b then you cannot choose project a any one at a time and when we had to rank between these two projects what was better ranking in terms of npv or irr npv we had discussed reasons why npv so except the project with highest irr no i reject option a use the opportunity cost of funds as the discount rate the vac is also called as opportunity cost of funds so yes that's correct and see except the projects for which irr is greater than the opportunity cost of funds granted the fact that if irr is greater than the discounting rate the npv is positive but what about the other project that may be having a higher npv so i cannot choose the project on the basis of highest irr right i have to select the project on the basis of highest npv that's why i reject option c also getting it okay fine now one numerical 
in this question you have to find out i forgot to mention you have to find out the cost of equity cost of equity is what you have to find out to be more specific with you you have to find out cost of equity using the mm proposition and to be more specific with you you have to find out cost of equity using mm proposition 2 with taxes now as per mm proposition 2 with taxes the cost of equity formula if you remember was cost of equity when the company is fully equity financed plus debt upon equity into cost of equity when the company is fully equity financed minus cost of debt into mm proposition 2 i said with taxes so net of tax now i have to simply substitute the numbers in this formula cost of equity when it is fully equity financed what do i consider unlevered vac unlevered means what there is no debt in the company means it is fully equity financed and that times cost of capital which is this 15% plus debt market value of debt is 25000 market value of equity is not given but market value of company is given 1 lakh out of which i subtract the market value of that debt 25000 so i'll get market value of equity which is 75000 15 and minus cost of debt 8 net of tax 1 minus 0.3 now solving for this Sixteen point six two. So closest is option B. Sixteen point six three. Okay, fine. Just be careful in denominator. You don't take one lakh. That is market value of company. We have to take market value of equity in the denominator. So appropriately subtract that. These are small small things, but you can go wrong. Understood this question? Fine. Okay. and as we had learned in mm proposition 2 with taxes when the company is fully equity financed you saw the cost of equity was 15% as you take on debt levels in your capital structure the cost of equity will increase but what will reduce vac as a whole will reduce fine okay any doubt in this or any other question in corporate issuers sure